What separates us humans from animals? Is it our opposable thumbs? Our complex language? The fact that we can farm our own food? Well, in the world of early personality psychology, really not much actually separated us from animals. Experiments were conducted on animals and then the conclusions were applied to humans. Many psychologists found this process to be very demeaning and ultimately pessimistic. Are we basically just trained smart monkeys in a zoo? Are we Pavlov's dogs just with a bit more mental capacity? Do we actually have any control? control over our personality and who we become. Enter Abraham Maslow, the father of the humanistic perspective on personality. His theory separates humans from animals and offers hope that humans can exercise control over their personality traits and the behaviors that they want to change. If you've ever heard of Maslow's name before, you're one step closer to understanding the humanistic perspective. Maslow created something called the hierarchy of needs, and this theory shows that the evolution of a human's needs goes from the most basic, like food, water, and shelter, to the more complex, like safety, self-esteem, love, and belonging. Now, as we satisfy our most basic needs, those on the bottom of the pyramid, we're more motivated to seek out more complex needs at the top of the pyramid. At the top of the pyramid is self-actualization, and for a long time, I actually struggled to know what this really meant. Self-actualization is a process by which people fulfill their potential, or they seek internal growth. You can call it enlightenment, you can call it personal development, or whatever you want to call it, it's the final thing that we are motivated to seek in life. So, imagine for a second that you can become the best version of yourself possible. Who would that person look like? How much money would they make? How many people would they help? Well, the path to that best imaginary person is is the act of self-actualization. Here's a definition of self-actualize. The process by which people fulfill their potential for goodness and maximize their internal growth. So, how does that tie into personality? Well, Maslow started to develop these theories in response to the more negative and pessimistic views on personality at the time. Many behaviorists believe that humans had little control over their personalities and they could be subjected to conditioning, just like any other species of animal on the planet. Maslow disagreed. He believed that humans could take control of their personalities as they attempt to achieve self-actualization. Well, in order to work towards self-actualization, humans have to reflect on who they currently are and what they need to do or to change in order to move forward. Carl Rogers was a humanist psychologist who focused on this process. Now, he, for the most part, agreed with Maslow's theories, but he pushed further to study how people actually satisfy these complex needs. What do you actually do? What thought processes are happening? Maslow focused on what, and Carl Rogers focused on how. So whenever a person thinks about their personality, they may tell themselves that they are honest, generous, and agreeable. Now these traits are all subjective, and may not be the way that other people see this type of person's deeds or personalities. Now this disconnect, or incongruence, can prevent people from reaching self-actualization and can actually cause some form of anxiety. So how does this happen? Well, our brains are very picky about what they choose to see, what they choose to process, and to remember. So a person who only believes that they are agreeable may unconsciously choose to remember positive agreeable interactions, or they might even misinterpret situations in which they were not actually displaying agreeable behavior. Their whole perspective changes. So where does this incongruence come from? How can we develop a more objective sense of ourselves within this world and actually try to reach self-actualization? Well, let's talk a little bit about humanistic studies. For the answer to these types of questions, Maslow and Rogers studied people who they believed reached some form of self-actualization. These people were very successful and spent their lives working to elevate humanity as a whole. I personally think someone like Elon Musk would be someone who they might study in today's world. Now, this approach of studying healthy, successful people was a big change in the world of personality psychology, and really just psychology in general. Before that, behaviorists and other personality psychologists at the time turned to study more people who made poor decisions in their life, or maybe had poor mental health health. Humanists took a more optimistic approach with their subjects and the people that they studied. So what do we need to actually do to become self-actualized and positive members of society? Well, Carl Rogers concluded that people need to live in an environment with the following qualities openness, opportunities for self-disclosure, acceptance, and empathy. If someone grew up in this type of environment, they're much more likely to hold congruent views of themselves that actually match how the rest of the world sees them. There's not going to be too much cognitive dissonance. Conversely, if someone grew up in a more hostile or negative environment, they're more likely to only see the things that they want to see. Now, Rogers uses the example of parents showing conditional and unconditional love. When children grow up in a household with unconditional love, they were more likely to hold congruent views of themselves 
themselves and actually be on a better path towards self-actualization. Now, the children who received conditional love were more likely to block out times in which they were not loved. An example of conditional love would be a parent showing love to a child who gets good grades, but they stop showing love whenever the child brings home a C. Now, this pattern is likely to continue as an adult. The process of only seeing parts of a situation or maybe misconstruing a situation is likely to continue as they're put in more positive environment. So as I wrap up this video, you need to remember that the humanistic approach to personality is very positive. Humanists believe that with openness, empathy, and a genuinely positive environment, anyone can start to develop congruent views of themselves and who they are and actually move forward towards self-actualization. Humanistic psychology has had a very positive impact on the world of psychology. People can visit a therapist that uses a humanist approach to their practice. Now, this is often called gestalt therapy. Gestalt therapy uses an approach that views patients and the therapist as equals. The therapist, rather than being an authority figure or someone like that who looks down on their patient, instead of doing that, they empathize. They use humanist ideas to create a positive environment, remember that's what we talked about earlier, that focuses on the present and positive emotions rather than bad and negative incidents from the past. Is your view of who you are congruent? Well, the process of discovering that your view of ourselves may be incongruent with the world isn't always easy. Supportive friends, groups, and therapists are very crucial to understanding where you fit in in the world. Think about how you see yourself and how you behave when friends or family try to offer opposing perspectives. How does this behavior contribute to your overall personality? How can you create and put yourself in an environment that encourages an open, genuine look at yourself through the eyes of the world? For a lot of people, a lot of problems they have because they can't see themselves the way that other people in the world might. And there's not really much else to explain about the humanist perspective of personality psychology. So if you enjoy this video, feel free to watch some of the other videos in this personality series. I've worked very hard on them. And if you want to learn more about your own personality, I've actually created a three-in-one personality quiz that you can take in the description below. It basically combines three of the major personality quizzes into one test that you can take in under 10 minutes. And hopefully I'll be able to predict some things about you, like your political stance, your relationship style, and maybe even your health. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video.